on intuition detection. Okay, this one. So, what is intuition detection, and how do you find out okay, all these kind of security risk, okay, security problems inside the computer system? So, let's move on. So, before jumping into the intrusion detection, okay, and the system itself, uh, let's understand what is intruder. So, intruder is someone, okay, or a key threat, okay. It can be considered as the key threat to the security system, uh, which is used, okay, uh, which uses some form of hacking, okay. So, using some new techniques of, okay, some kind of technique of hacking, okay, it tries to intrude, okay, the it tries to hack the system, okay. This is all about the intruders. So, mainly we sometimes call intruders as hackers and also the crackers, okay. Uh, so, the reason is, okay, they have many names, hackers, crackers, and intruders. Uh, the person Okay, is same okay, for the many names. So it can again okay, be considered as someone who hacks okay, the system, security system, uh, or just it can be considered as the key threat to the system itself. So one of the key threats to the security is the use of some form of hacking by an intruder. So uh, hackers or crackers or even intruders. So that's all. Uh, let's think about the okay, different types of intruders because we have many kinds of system and also there are many types of intruders. Okay, uh, a person can be a cyber criminal. Okay, it could be a cyber criminal like this one who do some kind of crime inside the cyber system. Uh, it could be a it could be an activist. Okay or other one, okay, and we will see one by one. So let's see the classes of intruders. So the first class is cyber criminals. So these are the individuals or the members of an organization, okay? So it could be a single person or a group of some organization, okay, uh, who are involved in some kind of crime, cyber crime, okay? Uh, with a goal of, okay, with a target of financial, okay, mainly, okay, financial reward. Uh, it should not be considered as reward, actually, it could be considered as financial loss to the organization. Uh, but the person who are involved, okay, in this kind of crime have different group. They organize, okay, to do the crime related to the mainly to the financial sectors, for example, for the banking sector. Okay, for the banking sector, uh, sectors, uh, there are okay a group of intruders who want to steal money. Okay, using uh, new tools and techniques to hack the system of the bank. So uh, there are many okay examples. I give you just one. To to do this, okay, uh, they do. A number of activities like uh, identify uh, uh, stealing the identity, identity theft, stealing the financial credential, okay, uh, secret information. Also, uh, corporate or uh, sp espionage means uh, some kind of spy on the some kind of corporate sectors, okay, to get some useful information and use it for their own benefit, not for the company. And data theft, which is very common these days, uh, stealing the data of others, okay, or maybe the data ransoming. So this is also a new kind of okay, attack or a threat inside the cyber. So cyber system mainly uh, work on uh, keeping the data secret inside the system, but most of the intruders are hackers. They some kind of data of the user, and they bargain for uh, re releasing of data, okay, in terms of okay some money. 
So ransoming is one of the reasons of okay such kind of attack. Okay, uh, so the next category is activist. So it could be considered as individual or uh, working, okay, insiders, sometimes insider, inside some company or corporate, okay, uh, or the member of a, a large group in the same way, okay, uh, from outside, okay. So they attack mainly, okay, um, to disturb or to, okay, change or to hack the social or political, okay, uh, information. So they cause trouble to the society or the political system itself. So that's why they are also known as hacktivists. Okay. So mainly they are considered as activists, but they do uh, hacking. So that's why hacktivist. Okay, like this one combination of two words. And uh, their skill level is often quite low because they don't know about the technology of the computer security network or the hacking, okay, too much in comparison to the cyber criminal, okay. Okay, let's move to the next one. The third category is state sponsored organization. So they are not just people or a group of people, sometimes even a complete uh, sector or just a complete country okay is involved in such kind of crime so the, there could be a group of hackers which is hired by some kind of government okay let's say or uh, who is interested to steal or do some spy on different kinds of activities of the uh, enemy countries well uh, this is one example it may be some kind of other kind of organization to organization this can be also poss possible, okay? So, this is also known as advanced precedent, okay? A persistent threat, APT. So, advanced persistent threat, because they keep on, okay, uh, going with such kind of spying on the other country or organization. So, that's why they are called persistent threat, okay? So, advanced persistent threat, continuous threat, okay, it is a continuity of same kind of threat itself. So due to the uh, convert of okay, nature and persistence over the extended period involved with many attacks okay, in this class. So uh, it continues for very long time, this is the main idea, okay? for extended period. The next type of attacks could be uh, also different kinds, okay, but uh, just we categorize in this, okay, uh, goes as others, okay. So we studied one, two, three, and this is number four, others. So in others, we will take all the rest of the hackers, okay. So the hackers with motivation other than those listed above, okay, including the classical head hackers or trackers, okay. As earlier, we spoke, we took about the examples related to the cyber criminal activist and now state-sponsored organizations, okay, hackers. Uh, the other one is who has motivation, okay. I should just mention like this one. So such kind of hackers, other hackers have motivation, okay, by technical challenge. So some hacker has okay motivation to do hacking not by uh, purpose. They just want to show their intelligence okay in that in the field of hacking. So they do it by passion, not by profession. Okay, so by okay pairing group okay by pairing group esteem uh, some prestige inside that they are the best one or reputation inside the group itself okay so there are many kinds itself let's move to the examples of okay some of the examples of so intrusions so uh, there are many examples in fact okay uh, defacing the web server means just okay hacking the web server okay uh, guessing and 
tracking the password okay so that they can use it for uh, as a legitimate okay a real user performing a remote route okay so that they can log into the system remotely uh, of an email server so mainly uh, to damage the email system itself and send the email as a real user uh, and then make so much okay confusion inside the corporate uh, copying a database okay if you have a an important database you may copy it and use it for some kind of credit card information okay and viewing sensitive data okay including payroll record so that they can use it for other business transaction and medical information okay to use it for their own benefit okay uh, also the possibility of running a packet sniffer using some kind of tools networking okay security tools on some uh, computer user computer to capture uh, username and password okay so they put inside the user's computer uh, some kind of okay software malware okay tool which is used to record to uh, to access the username and password of the user and then they can use it later uh, using a uh, permission error okay then another type okay uh, so using a permission error on an anonymous okay uh, without any identity FTP server okay? so using a permission error so that they can confuse the FTP servers to send information okay uh, to distribute okay pirated software and music file so this is another technique which is used by intruders or hackers uh, dialing into okay dialing into an unsecured mod modem so uh, let's say your router or modem is insecure without any protection security password or something else or your security keys are very weak okay then they can get into that system and gain the internal network okay access which is very dangerous in this case uh, possessing an as an executive okay calling the help desk so all these are okay, trained by the hackers to hack the system uh, resetting the okay the ex executive email password okay or learning the new password okay this is another one using an unattended okay a logged in workstation without permission so let's say a user has attended and he forgot to log out later the intruder will try to hack the system because the user has already logged in into the system so it will give it will uh, have a very high possibility for the hackers to hack the system later on so these are some of the examples of intrusion some of the possibilities of a system which is about to be hacked by the intruders okay let's move to the next one so i was talking about some of the examples so here is some other uh, diagram for such kind of okay possibilities uh i although the course didn't discuss about the backdoor attack this one but this is a possibility okay these days and kind of tech are always there in this modern web-based okay, systems so in this system again okay, the backdoor attacker will try to attack inside the service provider okay maybe uh using the some kind of connection between the uh, existing okay isp internet service provider okay uh, towers okay, using the access of the tower they can get into the system itself or well, possibilities are there they can go to the cloud and they can damage some cloud servers and other okay uh, radio gsm or dial up system like this one and uh, here okay mechanical equipment okay connected with all those devices uh, i am talking about iot internet of things okay at the moment so they can hack all these okay uh, uh, 
okay it is okay like this one uh okay i think i just did something wrong okay okay no problem just uh, if you can see it okay i cannot okay, okay so okay uh, that's enough i think that's okay let's move to the another one intuitive behavior okay uh how they behave okay all those hackers or intruders uh if they are not machine okay most of the okay intrusions or hacking attempts were done by the machine uh, man okay and thereafter okay machines also do some kind of hacking which is uh, controlled by someone okay the person who, who is in charge of that kind of hacking system okay that is attacker or hackers so uh, the behavior of okay intruders are like this so let's say the target acquisition they have behavior to attack on the target so that they can get complete control of the target number one uh, number two is information gathering why they want to get the target because inside the target acquisition i mean getting the control of the target thereafter they can get information okay which is secret information inside the system also initial access okay uh, privilege escalation means granting high level of permission which is uh, hacked and can be used for changing some kind of information inside to outside or outside to inside the system okay uh, also information gathering uh, almost the same thing okay uh, system exploits okay to exploit the system to use for wrong purpose okay the system itself maintaining access so that they can know each and every information from the uh, transaction okay covering a track so that they can get the trend of the user and or maybe the system itself so that they can use it for later misuse this is all about so okay uh, the first one okay okay uh, here is more detail so if i can okay it's not okay no problem so intuitive behavior is described here in more detail the target acquisition and information gathering so at this moment okay, where the attackers identifies okay, identifies and characterizes okay, the target system so it will identify that i need to hack the banking system let's say and it identifies the loophole inside okay, uh, the system itself using public publicly available information so this information is the first one is the key one for the intruders to get into the system using some of the information which is usually by carelessness is put on the, uh, on the websites and th this leads to the intruders uh, or better idea how to hack the system inside later on uh, both technical as, as technical information is sometimes useful for the hackers and uh, they use uh, they use the network okay to explore uh, network exploration okay tools to get into the system so they map target okay resources so resources could be anything uh, for example in the banking system it could be uh, resources like uh, some kind of hacked user and password username and password or maybe some other kind of okay uh, resources which is useful for the hackers to get into the system then the next one is initial access okay the initial access to a target system okay uh, this means uh, initial access to a target system typically by exploiting a remote network okay this one so exploiting misusing a remote network uh, some kind of vulnerability that may arise from the software um, box itself okay maybe some problem inside the software which is running on the user system or the corporate system okay by guessing 
some weak okay authentication credential sometimes it happens uh, uh, some system don't high level of okay uh, software debugging process so they get into trouble by using bugs the errors inside the software codes which are the target for the such kind of user uh, hackers actually okay privilege escalation means raising the uh, permissions inside itself inside the system so actions okay are taken on the system okay typically via a local access so usually uh, we give low level of permissions privileges okay uh, for accessing a system which is highly secure and we give a very special uh, permission or privilege to a limited number of people maybe the database administrator security professionals inside the corporate except those okay we don't give any other permission to everyone so uh, in this case of okay privilege escalation uh, local access okay vulnerability comes in means some kind of okay uh, permission which was accidentally given to the user which is not needed at that moment can be used for hacking this is also possible to increase the privilege okay availability to the hack attackers uh, so this is all about this one the next one is information okay gathering collecting information or system exploit so actions by attackers to access or modify information. So uh, attackers mainly target to access some information okay, from the system, useful, okay, or change, modify, okay, information. So they can access or modify information, or uh, even the resources itself, okay, information or resources on the system to the uh, to navigate to another target system. So let's say uh, there are two systems inside some corporate, let's say this one, or even three one, third one. So intuitive will try to find out which one is the weakest one. Okay, let's say A, B, and C are three systems inside a big corporate network. So the hack attacker is going to find out uh, let's say he he discovered that the system C is very weak, so he will try to get into C first. Okay, thereafter it will go to the another the lower one. Okay, lower one maybe the B, and then it will come to A, the strongest system. So by going through okay such a way, it can penetrate inside the security system by this okay strategy. So this is how it works. Okay, let's move to the next one, maintaining access. So the maintaining access means, okay, uh, actions such as the installation of the backdoors. Uh, I told you about the backdoor, okay. So actions such as in the installation of backdoors or other mal malicious software. So backdoor software or malicious software are very useful for the hackers. And they try to lure or just excite the user to install the system itself in, in their computers or maybe on the servers or even in other cases. Okay, So by doing so, they get a permission inside the system itself. And thereafter, they can do everything as whatever they want. So uh, or through the addition of convert authorization authentication credential okay this is another possibility that convert uh, they want to convert the uh, authentication credential getting the id password and so on okay or other configuration changes so whenever they are inside the system they can change the configuration file itself which is very useful for the most of the system to enable okay conti continued access by the attacker after the initial attack so these are some of the possibilities uh, the other one is covering tracks okay so where uh, in this case okay the attackers disables okay 
or edit okay audit log because the log file has each and every information uh, about the system itself whatever happened inside the system from each and every moment it is recorded inside the log file so audit log can keep all the record of hackers attack okay the time of attack uh, and the type of attack and all these information so the hackers want to disable such kind of information by uh, disabling log file okay? or changing whatever is inside written in the log file that uh, attack and attack at certain time and certain moment it will remove or just uh, disable such kind of log file so that there will be no evidence okay of attack inside the system and without any evidence uh, the security professionals cannot identify whether the attack was there earlier or not okay so this is the, one of the strategy covering up okay the mistakes or attacks covering up the attacks okay uh, so covering okay covering up or removing all the attack attacking tracks that's all the meaning is like this and uh, it uses okay uh, some kind of okay a malicious software or some kind of okay a hacking tools like root kits and other okay uh, equipments to hide such kind of it okay um, such kind of processes okay that's all okay I think so the next uh, topic is intrusion detection so now we learned about the hackers intruders and the types of intruders and the uh, possibilities of intrusions okay now let's move to the next topic which is also very important let's say we have been attacked so uh, but how can we identify this is the next topic okay so intrusion detection is the next topic so in this topic okay intrusion detection uh, the first one security intrusion so the security event or a combination of multiple security events so it could be a single event or a combination of many events itself related to the security that okay that constitutes a security incident in which the intruders gain or attempts to gain access to a system without having authorization to do so so security intrusions okay is identified uh, uh, by the security events okay so which is recorded in the log file mainly okay and also there are some other possibilities that if you have intrusion detection system itself inside the corporate sector inside your network then you can utilize that one to record such kind of intrusion event uh, intrusion uh, possibilities okay events so the event of attack is recorded inside such kind of okay uh, files which is a kind of intrusion det detection systems file okay so okay the security events and combination of such kind of security events uh, constitute a security incident in which the intruder okay, intruder gain or attempt to gain or access to the systems okay are uh, okay, recorded that's all security interest so okay this is all about this one okay so okay let's move to the next one intrusion detection okay so security intrusion related to the combination of okay security events. but here intrusion detection uh, okay is a little different in this one okay uh, security services okay that monitors so i'm talking about the same one the security service okay that monitors and analyzes such kind of intrusions okay uh, system events okay all these events for purpose of finding warning uh, trying to change the system or destroy the system all these kind of warning or uh, attempt to access the system okay by the intruders itself all are okay 
monitored, number one, and analyzed okay, in the system. So now we are going for the system itself. Okay? We are talking about the system. So intrusion detection is a security service that monitors and analyzes system events to identify, to find out, okay, to find out uh, all the, the uh, such kinds of okay, security warnings. So this is all about okay, security intrusions and intrusion detection. Okay, and uh, one of the example is here, okay, if I can tell you. So here, okay, I'm talking about uh, you will see it later. What what? Host okay. and from here, okay, uh, the the data is coming on the network has connection to the router itself, okay, of the corporate of the company. So let's say this is your company. So uh, this is a complete corporate network, let's say, imagine. And the company is connected to the internet, and the data is coming inside the corporate network through the router. The first thing is the router or gateway is used to identify the real okay, destination. And first, it will identify the packets. Okay? Uh, whether it is a real one or the fake one. And after that, it will pass through the firewall. After passing through the firewall, it will go to the IDS, intrusion detection system, okay, IDS. And thereafter, it can move to a number of users, okay. So let's say uh, it moves to the one user here or maybe another one, which is here, okay, let's say or maybe another user. So it is decided by IDS, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, by the gateway itself, okay? But IDS will identify first whether it is a legal or genuine user's message or whether it is a real packet or fake packet, okay? All these things, okay? So these packages are used, okay, uh, for analysis, okay? Analysis of a kind of network traffic by the network administrator or sometimes uh, mostly actually by the security professionals so ideas is always connected with the security professional to to analyze the data which is passing through the network to the internal network okay like this way so all these are done by the network professional uh, using the ideas. So there's a complete okay, combination of such kind of uh, ideas and security professionals okay, tie up. Okay, anyway, uh, so this is how it works. That's all. Uh, there's another example, okay, if I can show you at this moment. So here, okay, we have almost the same thing. Okay, so let's say the internet is here okay and it is sending some data information using packages okay uh, so the threats come from the internet mainly okay and it is passing through the router itself as early okay and it may pass through some switches okay there are also some possibilities or even move on okay with some kind of hubs okay or uh, it will pass through the firewall and another hub, okay, and switches. So uh, these hubs are connected with many kind of electronic devices, okay, uh, mainly network devices like endpoints, IDS sensors, IDS sensor. So we put it uh, IDS sensor in the main, in between the network itself, like this way, to identify intruders. The sensor will sense about the intruders, okay, sent package. And then they will sense and give the sensation, uh, sensation to the, uh, actually, yes, actually to the security professional that there is some kind of attack inside the system. 
uh, through the network. That's all. So these okay uh, electronic devices are connected okay at distance point. Let's say in point and ID manager. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, these most of the devices are the part of IDS. That's okay. But let's say uh, there's some other connectivity possible inside. Let's say it is connected with the uh, another okay, computer user, another one. So even before passing through all these networks, okay, uh, the data, the same data which is sent by the intruders, uh, it will pass through this IDS sensor or uh, complete IDS system so that it will be identified first that the threat is from the uh, intruders or not okay and thereafter it will collect all such kind of information to analyze the threat okay and if there is some kind of threat it will send the report okay uh, in fact uh, without any okay uh, attack it will always send the report that everything is fine in case of no attack uh, if there's some some event that happened inside the system in between some kind of okay uh, uh, some kind of lap of security they will also be recorded inside the report okay. so uh, this is a typical intrusion intrusion detection system okay complete one that's okay so uh, let's see what is inside IDS tunnel. So intrusion detection system is a big system, not a small one. And it has many components itself. Okay. So the system is placed, put in place inside the corporate network uh, right after the network traffic from outside using World Wide Web Internet. Okay. So it will, as you can see here, okay, the system has placed inside okay, just after the internet. So it will pass through internet and then go to the router, and thereafter it will put in place the IDS. So the same thing is here. Okay, uh, let's see uh, the components, okay, logical components mainly, okay, of the IDS. So inside this de detection system, intrusion detection. System, uh, we have a significant number of sensors. Why? Because sensors has capability to sense the data, sense the information. So the sensors, okay, are responsible for collecting data. It can get all the time observations about the network traffic, that what kind of network packages are coming. Uh, what type of this package is and uh, how long it has been there, uh, what is the size of the package that has been sent to the user, okay, all these things. So the sensor network traffic by collecting the information, recording all those okay, observation data. The input for a sensor may be any part of the system okay, that, could, that could contain evidence. So the main idea is to find, identify evidence that there is some kind of attack event happened. Uh, analyzer is another part. Okay? So analyzer okay, receives, uh, analyzers receive input. Okay? They receive input from the sensors. Okay? So, so the main idea is, okay, let's say the internet traffic is coming inside. So the sensor will be there at first. Okay? inside IDS system that will sense the data information of net network traffic. So that sensor okay will sense the data. You can think like this. So let's say this is the internet network traffic and uh, let's say IDS is like this one. Okay. You can think like this IDS. And inside the IDS there are Sensors. So the sensors are used to okay sense the. Uh, I mean, it should be like this, not just this way. Okay, actually, the sensors are used okay to know the internet. So they will send a sense of the data, information, observation about the environment that is 
World Wide Web, okay, all these things. So every time the sensor will collect all the observations to the IDS system. And collection will be transferred, all those data will be transferred to another component that is called analyzer, this one. So analyzer will start to analyze the data, what kind of attack was there or what kind of hackers okay, are there itself. Okay. So uh, the next component is analyzer to receive the input from the sensors and analyze, okay, uh, or okay, analyze or determine, okay, uh, the possibilities of attack. That's all. The third component is, is user interface. So after an analysis, okay, the data is passed through the some kind of software interface to the IT, prof uh, IT professional or security professional. Okay. So they will monitor, they will analyze, see the results of all those okay, uh, data. So an analysis is done and it will pass through the IT prof uh, the security professional. Okay. And the security professional cannot see every analysis itself it needs some kind of interface to see what's going on okay uh, on the screen okay so this is a interface which is built inside the computer system which is a part of this ideas itself okay so sensors analyzer and user interface are the three component okay so the all these are there let's move to the next one so, in fact, uh, there are many types of okay, intrusion detection system ideas. So, we will mainly focus on these three at the moment. Okay? So, HIDS hits host based ideas, okay? host based one, and the network based and the uh, distributed or hybrid ideas. Okay? So, sometimes it is known as distributed or sometimes it is considered as hybrid one. So wh who, uh, what are those, okay, and how we differentiate between all these? Uh, the first one is uh, host-based ideas, hits, okay. It monitors okay, the properties or characteristics of single host. Okay, and and the events that are occurring inside those hosts, okay, uh, uh, such as processes that are running inside the system, and uh, the system calls, okay, they make for another processor, and they collect the evidence of suspicious activities, which is caused by maybe it is not sure, but maybe by the hackers itself. Uh, so the main thing is it is totally depend on the host. That's why it is called host-based IDS. The another type of okay IDS is network-based. So mainly it is based on network. So it will okay it monitors okay network traffic for uh, some kind of some special kind of particular okay network segments. So it will check the are sent or received by by the packages okay also it will check the devices network devices and then analyze okay the network itself uh, for different protocols and layers okay uh, ISO layers okay all those network transport application layers and also the protocols associated with those okay layers itself so uh, all these things right so the main idea is it totally depends on the network. Uh, the distributed or hybrid ideas is a combination of okay, information from uh, sensors okay, that, that are used to collect or receive the information from the environment, from the internet, right? And often both host and network are involved in this okay, combined ideas or hybrid ideas. Ideas, okay, distributed ideas system. 
So uh, they put all those information, okay, inside the central analyzer to analyze the complete data. So it is a robust system actually because it has a combination of host and network. Okay. And also uh, thereafter it will be able to better understand uh, attacks, okay, identify and uh, able to respond in the same manner to those intruders, okay, activities. So it could be considered like this. I have one example like this one. So here, okay, we can see uh, NDS. I'm talking about NDS, it's like this one. So in the NDS, okay, this one, uh, we have internet, okay. The data is passing through, but before going to the clients itself, the network-based uh, detection system, okay, will first identify okay all those problems using nds system uh, before going to the client itself the data passing through okay the network so the network is first checked okay so uh, using okay some different tools and techniques by the security professionals to identify all those risks okay so nds is employed inside the network not on the host, okay, not on the host. But here in the head, okay, hybrid, well, we have, okay, different situation. Here the network is passed through the internet to different, uh, okay, clients, which is used to, okay, uh, record or analyze the data itself uh, using the control one, okay. So centralized control module will uh, see all the analyzed data, it will analyze and monitor always such kind of intruders. So it is totally different okay, from this NDS. So here's one more typical example about the uh, distributed one. Okay? So here we can see as in this figure, okay, uh, the network is here and if the data is data traffic is passing through this one, okay, it will first, okay, see this one, okay, it will first, okay, uh, be there, okay, uh, to the, all these, okay, uh, attacks, it will be first uh, led by, okay, it will be first understood by the, actually, by the DIDS, okay, distributed into the Intrusion detection system, okay. and here the main traffic, main network inside our corporate. We have different kinds of servers: FTP server, or a web server, and others. Okay, the clients are here itself. So before passing into okay all these okay network, it will be first okay uh, identified by the network system security system and also at the same time it will be identified by the host as well okay so all these are together so okay, uh, almost we are finished okay just I think this is the last slide okay so the false positive and false negative there are two possibilities of detection sometimes the attack is real sometimes it is fake so uh, Here's a very simple okay, table for understanding. Let's say the attack is a real one, okay? And uh, there are two possibilities. It could be true or it could be false. At the same time, it could be positive attack or negative attack. So in the true positive case, okay, a uh, rule matches that, okay, IDS has identified because of the rule that uh, there's a rule like, okay, uh, the IP must be the same. But uh, let's say the intruders has got the IP address. So rule match in, the, in this case, but attack and attack is present. This is one possibility. So that's why it is called true positive, true positive. In other cases, uh, rule matches, but there's no uh, attack, the real one, okay? There's no at real attack. So that is the case of false positive, okay? Let's say we another situation that no rule matched but and also no attack present.
So then we say it is a true negative case. Okay. The fourth case can be when there's no rule okay, matched and attack is present. So no rule, but the attack is real. So in this case, it is called false negative. So these are four different possibilities okay, that is here. So we are talking about false positive and also false negative and so on. So uh, intruders okay, differ from okay, typical behavior like this one. So uh, although the typical behavior of intruders okay, differ from typical behavior of an authorized user, so there's some kind of overlap in these behaviors. Okay? So thus a uh, uh, loose in, okay, interpretation of intruder behavior which will uh, catch more intruders will also lead to a number of false signal, false positive or false alarm, okay? Uh, where an authorized users are identified as user. So it is false, okay, attack, uh, alarm. So sometimes the real user gets trouble. They are considered by the system as the intruders. So this is one situation. Uh, on the other situation, we have, okay, an attempt to limit, okay, false positive by tight interpretation, okay, understanding about the intruders. In that case, okay, uh, we will lose, okay, uh, the chances of real intruders, okay. So in that case, the false negative will bring more intruders that are not identified, not identified as the real intruders, okay. So there are different situations like this one, okay, that's all. And we are talking about this, okay, overlapping of these two, okay double okay bell shaped okay, figure so here we have we are analyzing okay uh, we are analyzing the trends of behavior of intruders and authorized user okay these two so here we have probability density function which is a mathematical function and here we are measuring okay behavior parameters so this kind of opal overlap which is here you can see here is okay overlap in observed or expected behavior. So this gives, okay, a lot of cases like, as I told you, false negative, false positive, and so on. So this is all about, okay, uh, the intuitors. So in the requirement section, okay, we have certain requirements for ideas, intuition detection system. First one is run continually, okay? So, so okay, has capacity to run continuously. Being tolerant means it should have okay the ability to sustain in the critical situation. This means the system should continue to work with without any failure. The second one is uh, resist okay subversion. So subversioning is a main problem in the ID system. So it will resist such kind of subversioning, okay, so that it can uh, have standby positions, all this. And use, okay, so stability sustain in changing environment. Uh, configured according to system security policies, okay, the next one. So there are certain security policies that must be, okay, followed to have ideas, okay, this one. So we must have uh, such a con con configurations to have, okay, uh, followed, okay, security policies, okay. The second, uh, the next one is impose a minimum, okay, overhead on systems. So uh, uh, low load on the system itself, okay. Allow dynamic, reconfiguration. So this means uh, we have to, okay, uh, we must have idea system that will allow dynamic, continuous, okay, ch uh, changeable reconfiguration as per the security threats and uh, from time to time vulnerabilities and securities. The next one is provide graceful degradation of service. Okay. So provide graceful, okay, degradation of service. This means services, I'm talking about the security services. 
So it must, okay, ideas must provide graceful okay, degradation, uh, degradation of self. Is the uh, okay, the last one is scale to monitor large number of system. So uh, scalability is okay, ideas requirement means it could be okay change to large number of system monitoring or it could be rechange into a small number of system monitoring. So scalability means to increase the number of system to which it can control or it can okay, uh, be implemented inside. So scalability means increasing the number of systems itself. Okay, let's move to the next one. Okay. So uh, this is in words okay, about the, uh, the desirable, okay. what is desirable for an ideas. So in ideas requirement, okay, following uh, the desirable uh, means it is needed for an idea system. So we must have such kind of system, idea system that must comply with like this one, run continually, the same thing actually, does it run continually with minimum, okay, human super, supervision. So it must uh, have most of the time automation so that human supervision is uh, not too much, okay, dependent. The next one is, okay, uh, be fault tolerant in the sense that it must be able to recover, okay, see, the same thing. So from system crashes and reinitialization. The next one is resist, okay, subversion. Ideas must be able to monitor itself and detect, okay, if it has been modified by an attacker. So uh, it must have the originality always. Uh, and the attackers try to change the environment and the system itself, but it must have ability to sustain and itself that if there are some changes inside the system, it must resist to change. Okay, so this is uh, this is subversing. Impose a minimal. Okay, this one. So impose a minimal overhead on the system where it is running means low overhead okay be able to be configured okay according to the security policies so we must have a system that will follow always to the security policies so uh, by doing so it is most protected by the system itself against the attackers okay. uh, be able to adapt to changes okay so it must have okay adaptability to ch to the changes in the system and the user behavior over time so let's say uh, the user behavior in the system or maybe the environment is changing surrounding the system itself so it must be able to change okay in accordance with to have better security measures so this is another okay feature that we must have be able to scale to monitor all a large number of host uh, scalability we are talking now about the scalability to monitor a large number of hosts a large number of system means not the security i am talking about the internal system of the corporate or company so uh, we have a number of systems inside a company and these systems are controlled by the security system like IDS outside of the system. So it can be considered as an integrated part of the whole corporate network but at the same time okay, uh, the IDS must be such a capable system that it can have additional uh, capability to contain more okay, systems inside the corporate network okay, to, to be monitored by the ideas. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, so the scalability, that's all. Uh, provide graceful degradation. Okay? So this means, okay, uh, it must have graceful, okay, respectful degradation of service in the sense that if some components of the ideas stops, 
So let's say, uh, uh, as you know, IDS has many components. So if one component is stopped working, then there should be other components. They should fully uh, help the rest of the com components to work together so that the failure of a component could not be realized in real sense. Okay, So if a component okay, of the IDS stops, then the rest of the components should be okay, affected as little as possible, this one I'm talking about. So the minimal uh, effect on the rest of the system. Okay, So it must be, uh, it is related to the, actually to the fault tolerance, this one, this line. Okay? So they are correlated. So if a system is fault tolerant, this means if something failed inside the system, this means they are able to recover, okay? They are able to recover itself from those, okay, failures. Okay, uh, the last one is allow dynamic reconfiguration. This means the ability to configure ideas without, okay, without having to restart. And this was related to the, the previous point, okay, the same thing. So let's go to the next topic, which is more important about the analysis approach. Okay. Uh, it's uh, not working. Just wait a second. I think we got the network problem. Please do. Okay, so. Uh, sorry for interruption. I think about the network problem. Uh, is it okay now? That's okay. Can you see it? That's okay. Can you see the slide? Now? Is it okay? Can you see the slide? Okay now? Okay, so I will continue from here. So this is the next slide, analysis approaches, okay? So most of the time, ideas work with the hardwares which are built inside the complete idea system. But in other cases, okay, we do some kind of human analysis about the system itself. So uh, the analysis will help the uh, system itself to identify intruders inside the system. So detection of intruders is the second approach and which is also known as analysis approach. Okay. So, uh, okay, let's say uh, this is your analysis approach with this one. So ideas typically use one of the following alternative. One, number one, and number two. The first one is anomaly detection. And the second one is signature or heuristic de detection. So in the first okay, uh, uh, we are talking about the, mainly the okay, approaches. And these approaches are used to analyze okay, uh, the sensor data, the network data to detect intruders, detect, to detect the intrusions inside the system uh, in relation to the security issues. So the first one is anomaly detection. This involves a collection of data in the network okay, to see the behavior of legitimate user. So we are collecting the network traffic data okay, for a long time. And then okay, uh, after that collection of data, we analyze the data. Then current observed data okay, behavior is uh, observed in terms of data. So most of the time the data tells the story of the, uh, the users or the inter hackers. So every time uh, after analyzing the data, we get some uh, kind, some kind of con conclusions that there's some kind of okay, unusual behavior. Those unusual behavior leads to the anomaly detection. So if everything is smooth, you are getting data as usual, and there's no sign of unusual data, unusual information. This means everything is okay. Otherwise, okay, we must 
think about some kind of anomaly, some kind of unusual things are going on inside our network traffic. So for that reason, okay, it is useful for security professionals to find out those anomaly, those unusual behavior, those unusual data, okay, that can lead to the identification of the intruders. So this is the main story about this one. So uh, the observed behavior, okay, which is analyzed usually using uh, some kind of analyzing softwares to determine, okay, with a high level of confidence that everything is fine. If it is everything fine, if everything is fine, this means it will be reflected. It will be shown by the data that the data flow is normal. But whenever okay, the intruders attack, the data changes, and then we can identify intruders. So whether this behavior is a legitimate user, okay, in the normal cases, or are an unusual. So in the heuristic okay, detection of signature, we try to identify the signatures. Okay, so it is like this: uh, it uses a set of known, okay, mal uh, malicious data pattern. Okay, so we already know some kind of malicious data pattern, just like uh, antivirus, you know. So in the antivirus, we have a, a record of signatures or record of data which are used to uh, identify the virus inside. So in the same way, it uses okay signature or heuristic detection anomaly approach uses a set of known malicious data pattern signatures uh, or attack rule. Used or it is all this okay uh, considered as a help to identify the next coming uh, hackers attack. So that uh, existing set of unknown data pattern are compared with. This is important. It is they, so they are always compared. Those data sets are always compared with the existing or current okay, behavior to decide whether uh, it is the same pattern or different pattern. If it is the same pattern, this means uh, there's some kind of malicious activities are going on inside by the intruders. If the if they don't match, this means the set of known malicious data pattern and the data pattern we are receiving from the network. If they don't match together, this means everything is fine because we are not in the process of getting such kind of malicious data and we are safe in this case. So it is also known as okay, a misuse detection. Okay? So the second name is misuse detection. This approach they identify known attacks. Okay? So if we have a known signatures, if we have a known data pattern okay, uh, that we know earlier that such kind of data pattern are the sign of attack. So uh, then we can approach this technique and we can identify known attacks by this way. If the known attack is different from the, the latest or novel attack, which is completely different from existing attacks, so we can use it to identify the real attack. So if the technique is old one, then I, uh, we can use it to identify those attacks. If the technique is the latest one, if it is the new technique, then we cannot identify using the signature or heuristic detection. So for which it has been, it has pattern or rule, or, or the same thing actually. So I think I got, you got the idea. What does it mean? So let's move to the next one, okay, about the anomaly detection uh, in more detail. So anomaly detection, uh, usually it is done uh, at the large scale data. So the anomaly detection approach involves first okay, developing a model to legit 
legitimate user, okay? model of legitimate user behavior by collecting processing sensor data from normal operations. So uh, of the monitor system in a training phase. Okay? So first we get uh, some sample data, collect a number of sample data actually, and we analyze them to identify some kind of unusual behavior. So if the current observed okay, behavior is compared after that, okay, if the uh, existing data which is coming from the network is matching with the existing okay, sample data or model data okay, in order to classify. So in, if they are compared with existing sample data and after okay, they match, this means there is some kind of attack. The same thing as I told you earlier. So if it is uh, matching, this means there is some kind of attack. Otherwise, everything is fine. Okay, the same thing. So it, if it is, uh, it could be legitimate user or anomalous, means completely different okay? uh, activity, which is sign of uh, some kind of attack. So a variety of classification approach are used in this case. So basically, statistical analysis is one of them. Uh, in this uh, statistical analysis, we observe okay, uh, the behavior using univariate, multivariate, or time series data and analyze them inside our system. Uh, the other one is knowledge base. Okay? So this approach uses an expert system okay, that classifies observed behavior. Uh, so it classifies okay, observed behavior according to a set of rules. Okay, defined earlier already. So that model legitim uh, legitimate behavior. Okay? So uh, it is compared with existing rule to the uh, rule that is okay, made by analyzing the data itself. So that is the model, uh, creating model okay? and then getting the knowledge about the a different kind of pattern. Okay, the next one is machine learning. So this is these are very famous machine learning approaches. So this approach is uh, such as uh, like this. It will automatically okay determines okay whenever we are under the attack of the uh, in the within the security okay system. So approach okay this approach is automatically a detection a suitable classification model from the training data using data mining techniques. So machine learning or data mining techniques are used inside to identify the attacks using existing data, okay, or the testing data, which is coming from training data, uh, I mean training data and testing data. So let's say there's a whole set of data which is collected from the network. So we divide the data in two parts. One is testing data, and okay, and the other one is training data. So by training, but first we test it, okay, uh, to create the model, and then we train it, okay, train the model, and after training the model, we can get okay a complete robust model, okay. That model is always used to identify the next attack from the hackers. So this is almost the same way, okay, as earlier, but a little different because we are utilizing some new algorithm of machine learning or data mining to identify uh, such kind of attack, that's all. So all these, okay, are different techniques for anomaly detection. Okay, let's go to the next one, okay, or uh, heuristic detection. In this one, Signature or holistic det techniques okay, detect intrusion, intrusions by observing. It detects intrusions by observing events that are happening inside our traffic, I mean network traffic in the system and applying either okay, a set of signature pattern to the data or a set of rules that uh, characterize the data itself. 
and this leads to a decision uh, where we decide about the observed data okay uh, whether it is a normal data or anomalous data okay? the same as I told you earlier so uh, here okay almost the same thing as earlier okay? signature approaches and rule based heuristic identification so here okay in this one signature approaches uh, we identify okay the signatures uh, I mean from the existing one to the latest one so every time signatures are matched, okay, the signature which is created by the model itself and the uh, traffic okay, signatures. So match a large collection of known pattern okay, or the signatures of malicious data against data which is, uh, that are stored in the system during the uh, network traffic. So the signatures need to be large enough to, be, to minimize the false alarm. So if we have a large collection of data, then the accuracy will increase and then it, there will be minimum number of false alarm. Otherwise, uh, if the data is less, this means we don't have a perfect sig signature. And then we may get sometimes false alarm that I got the attacker's signature, but it is not really, okay? So uh, this is uh, another possibility. So while okay, still okay, uh, detecting a suffi uh, sufficiently large fraction of malicious data, uh, we must okay have uh, ability to get more and more data so that we can get rid of false alarm. Okay, so if we have more data, then we will get true alarm, not the false one. The rule-based heuristic identification means it involves okay, the use of rules for identifying known okay, penetrations or penetrations uh, that are related or would exploit known weaknesses inside the system. So the rules can, okay, uh, can, also, rules can also be defined okay, that identify okay, suspicious behavior, suspicious activities even when the behavior is within the bounds of established patterns of uses. Okay? This one. So this is uh, the same thing as I told you, rule-based. Okay? We have a set of rules that are already existing okay, inside the system. And thereafter, we compare the rule with the other one. Okay? That's all. Uh, the next one is, okay, host based intrusion detection hits. So in this one, okay, we have a system okay, which is based on host. Okay. So hits monitors activities on the system, as I shown you earlier, I think there's one more example. No. So remember I told you about the hits earlier. So host based intrusion detection okay, hits, the hits, okay, hits monitors activity on the system in a variety of ways in a number of ways to detect okay, suspicious behavior inside the system network. So in some cases, an IDS can halt an attack, stop an attack before any damage is done by using hits. But its the main purpose is to detect okay, intrusions. So detection of intrusion is the main thing. Uh, log suspicious events, okay, we can use log suspicious event uh, to log out those, okay, uh, events which are harmful for the system itself. And uh, in other cases, the IDS also uses alerts by sending the alerts, okay, to this another way. So the primary benefit of HITS is, to, is that it can detect both external and internal intrusions. This is important. So it can detect both in external and internal intrusions, which is very useful most of the time. Sometimes something that is not possible either with a network-based ideas or firewall. So it is better in comparison to a network-based ideas or firewall because it can identify 
both kind of intrusion, external and internal. So this is called distributed one, distributed intrusion detection. So here we will study, okay, how does it work? What does it look like? Okay, all these things. The, the main emphasis is on the, this slide is uh, about the architecture of the distributed intrusion detection, right? So let's begin with this one. Uh, the distributed uh, intrusion detection can have two types, okay? In fact, uh, it could be, uh, if, you, if you can see here, okay, it could be a centralized architecture like this one. Uh, in this one, centralized architecture, uh, there is a single central point okay, of the collection. So there's only one, okay, central position center point, okay, center, cent, uh, the center point of the collection and uh, analysis of all sensor data. So uh, it will be considered as a one point, okay, uh, observation and analysis of all the data itself and rest of the things are connected but they are not, okay, collecting data or analyzing data. So every time when the, whenever the data comes to from a network, let's say. Oh, I think there's some problem here. Okay, well, let me see. Let's see if it's it. Okay. Okay, so hopefully it will be okay this time. So here, okay, if you can see, uh, in this architecture, distributed intrusion detection, uh, we are talking about the uh, first one, centralized one. So in the centralized architecture, there's a single center point of collection of data and an analysis of data, uh, which is coming from the network. So in this case, okay, uh, the task of correcting, uh, uh, correlating actually uh, incoming data, but uh, it creates a potential bottleneck in the sense that if we collect only one point, okay, uh, so a single point of failure will give, okay, no result and uh, all the uh, collection and the analysis will be destroyed by this way. So it could be not a good idea to have a central one. So there's another possibility that we should decentralize. So in this case, okay, there's more than one analysis center we will where we will collect the data and then and, uh, do some analysis of the data. Uh, but uh, there must, uh, there, okay, uh, these must coordinate with one another uh, for the activities of collection of data and analysis of data together. So exchange of information between these centers are expected. So uh, overall architecture, okay, in the, the distributed intrusion detection can have three main okay, components. Number one is host agent module. So in the host agent module, okay, an audit collection module, okay, which is uh, is used to operate okay, as background process. So it is used as background process on uh, to monitor the system. And uh, the main uh, aim or the purpose is to collect the data Okay. Uh, and also uh, transmit these okay, data to the central manager, like this one. So to collect data and transmit the data to the central manager. The second one is land monitoring agent module. So in this one, okay, uh, it operates in the same fashion as, uh, as the first one, okay, uh, as a host agent module. But the thing is, okay, for the purpose of this one, so it works in exactly the same, okay, as a host agent module. 
uh, but there's a one difference that it analyzes land traffic the data which is coming to the from the network itself and it will report okay analyze the data and make a report uh, to the central manager so it a uh, indirect way of representing the data information okay so uh, this is the uh, main difference between uh, this these two actually the third one is central manager module this one so here okay in this one uh, it receives a report, okay, report which is coming by analyzing the data from uh, local area network monitor and host agent, okay, and host agent and processes. So it hosts and process uh, correlated uh, and uh, also it will give some correlation between these data uh, within the report to detect the intrusions, so which is very essential to find out the uh, anomaly or uh, intrusions. Okay. So uh, this is okay. The difference between these three. So in this last one, we can see that it receives the report from LAN. Okay, first, then it will host and process the data information, and finally it will correlate uh, all those events within the report to detect the intrusion. So this is the third way. Okay. Oh, let's go to the next one. Okay. So this is the main architecture for distributed intrusion detection. So in this one, okay, as we can see here, uh, we have a LAN monitor, the part one, the central manager, and also uh, this is the, the traffic network, which is coming to the net internet. So here, okay, uh, we have, okay, after going through okay, this traffic, uh, it will come to the, through the internet and it will go to the uh, central manager which is connected with the internet. So here again manager module will do all the basic operations for analyzing, collecting data and analyzing the data. The LAN monitor okay, will monitor all the hosts which are residing on this network. So uh, agent module will work inside every host. So agent module will be there in every host and it will be used to collect the data, land monitor. So this is a very easy, simple example of uh, distributed intrusion detection. That's all. The second type okay, of uh, uh, system is network-based. Okay? This is network-based IDS, intrusion detection system, NETS. So NIST are typically okay, included in the perimeter security infrastructure. So either incorporated in or associated with the firewall. So most of the time it is okay in connection with the firewall. So uh, this is okay the main thing about the network based ideas. So they uh, they mainly focus on monitoring for external intrusion detection, uh, intrusions, okay, which is done by the intruders to find out, uh, to find a loophole inside the security network. So by analyzing the traffic, the data, okay, so by analyzing the data, uh, it can identify the patterns and also uh, traffic content, okay, which is used to, okay, analyze also for finding out the malicious activity, okay, all these things. So uh, this is, okay, uh, basically on the uh, network, okay. So with the increasing use of encryption, okay, so by, uh, now we are using a lot of encryption to encrypt the data. So day by day, uh, by increasing use of encryption, okay, uh, NIFs have lost okay, access to significant content. So because the data is encrypted, so it is not uh, ready to be 
analyzed okay, in other cases. So uh, hindering okay, the, this ability to function well. So we need a clear data and which is not possible in case of encrypted, encrypted one. So that's why sometimes this uh, network based IDS gets problem. So okay, uh, but still it plays an important role to uh, identify intruders which are coming to the network directly. So they can only form okay part of the solution, not complete solution, because uh, some of the data is not analyzed because of the encrypted nature. So the TIPCO innate okay facility. And sensors, it includes a number of sensors to monitor the packets, okay, monitor packet traffic. Uh, also, it also have okay one or more servers, okay, for management of the nets. Uh, also, uh, one or more management console, okay, terminal, or you can say as client, okay, for uh, interaction with the. IT professional or security professional to have okay, a look over the network traffic and uh, finding the exact okay, intruders. So uh, these are all components inside the network based IDS. So okay, our NETS okay, is uh, have okay, some of the th these things. It monitors traffic at selected point, okay, number one, if I can make it possible for you Wait a second. so number one it monitors traffic at selected point on the network uh, it examines traffic packets by packet okay packet by packet in real or uh, close to real time real world okay and also may examine network transport and application level protocol activity also, uh, it comprises a number of sensors. So as I shown you earlier, I have told you earlier, one of the most uh, a number of servers and a number of uh, sensors. So sensors and servers uh, are, in, are used for management purpose of NETS. And one or more management console uh, for human interface. So this is a repeated slide, actually. We, we have already studied all these things here. So analysis of traffic pattern okay, is the main idea. Uh, and it is done by sensor data, which is collected from the network. And then management server is used to manage the net system. OK, uh, so there are several types of sensors in the network. So we will study in this slide the types of network sensors, which are used to, uh, uh, which are used to okay, uh, get information, or uh, we can say as observation. Okay, so we can say it observation. So collection of observation or data is done by sensors. The main thing is this one. So let's see how does it work and uh, what are those types. Number one. So they are basically okay. Uh, the sensors are two types. Okay, so uh, so before that, uh, there are two modes. Okay, we can put it. The first thing, uh, there are two modes: inline mode or positive mode. Okay, uh, passive passive mode. So inline or passive. Okay, these are the two modes. So in the inline sensors, okay, uh, which is used inside the network segment. So that the traffic, okay, or the data, okay, network data that is going to be monitored, okay, must pass through the sensor. So in this case, uh, the data must, okay, I should say, the traffic, okay, the data must pass through the sensor in this case, so that we can observe every time, okay, data. We can collect all the data every time. And also, uh, there's another possibility that in the passive. Uh, sensors. So the passive sensors okay, monitors a copy of network. So it monitors not ju uh, just the uh, real okay, data, but it just keep a copy of the network. So it monitors a copy of network traffic. The actual traffic doesn't pass through the device. 
So it is just opposite. So uh, it is not on the way of the okay, traffic. It is out of the traffic and doesn't pass through the device. Okay, so this is the difference. Pass through the device itself. Uh, so from the point of view of traffic flow, the passive sensor is more efficient than the inline. It is more efficient. Okay, why? Because uh, we don't need to okay, care about okay recording each and every time okay the data. Uh, we are just taking the copies of the data and we are happy with the data okay that's all to be analyzed so and it is uh, not just extra load overload by uh, keeping all the time recording and then sending the data to the host itself so uh, it okay does not it does not add an extra handling extra so this extra handling i must say is the reason okay so that contributes to the packet delay. As I told you, it, it will delay, okay, like this one. So, okay, let's move to the next one. So the next one is honeypot, okay. So in the honeypot, okay, we have, okay, uh, the definition first. So the honeypots are, okay, decoy system that are designed Okay, so these are designed to attract the attackers, potential attackers, uh, so that they can attack on the system. So they are just like a honey to uh, the attackers. And uh, this is just a simple picture that you can think about. So uh, that are designed to attract the attackers uh, to be attacked on the system. Okay, so. Uh, but the honeypot are placed out of the system it actually okay so if there's some critical system inside our uh, corporate network let's say we have a collection of systems inside a corporate network and we place the honeypot just nearby the system so all the time uh, the traffic is coming from the internet and the attacker is here so he will be directed to the honeypot not the real system so by doing so uh, the attacker will always get into access of this uh, honeypot, not the exact system. Okay, so this is the main idea. So, okay, uh, so attack away from the critical system. That's all. This one. So, honeypots are designed to divert okay, an attacker from accessing the main system, uh, collect information about the attacker's activity. Uh, also, by uh, having a series of attack, attacking activities or events, it can record each and every event, and then it can give better idea of the attacker itself. And it also encourages, okay, almost the same thing, uh, the attacker to stay on the system, okay, as long as possible. So that's all. So these systems are filled with fabricated information or with uh, fabricated it means it is a dummy or just uh, uh, false information but it is almost the uh, look like a real one but it is not the real data real information of the corporate network so in this case the attacker thinks that he has already attacked the uh, corporate network data itself but it is not so uh, this is a confusing point for the attacker because he didn't get the real data. So uh, this is a good strategy for some kind of okay, uh, prevention measure in case of a severe attack on the system itself. So okay, um, the next one is the fabricated information okay, uh, to appear as a valuable, okay, um, but that a legitimate use of the system would not be accessed. So in this case, we are, the attacker will not be able to access the real system, but the fabricated one. Also, uh, any access to the honeypot is, sus is suspect. Okay? The system is instrumented with some sensitive uh, monitors, okay? an event log, like this one, uh, I mean, logger that can 
uh, record the events information on the time of the attack and it can detect and identify these accesses and uh, attackers okay uh, malicious activities so all these are done in this honeypot that's all so okay let's move to the next one snort ideas so i think how many i have left with uh, i think uh, okay we have really closed that's okay so the slot ideas okay? in this okay uh, snort ideas system uh, the main thing is snort okay so snort is an open source okay it is mainly an open source highly conf configurable uh, portable okay host based or network based intrusion detection system ideas so uh, snort is referred to as a lightweight ideas mainly because uh, you don't need too much okay uh, system configuration or you don't need too much uh, system component to adjust it and put in the put in place to the in within the network that's all so it is easy to set up number one it is easy to design it is easy to configure all these are a uh, sign of lightweight and simple ideas okay uh, which has okay falling characteristics okay let's see what are those again so easily okay uh, as i told you the same thing same idea easily deployed on most networks okay host server router everywhere and also efficient operations so it is able to operate efficiently uh, it uses a small amount of memory and processor at the same time so it leaves uh, it, it needs less memory okay to and less speed okay to get all the operation done so efficient operation okay using a small amount of memory and processor uh, it is easily configurable oh I, the same thing as i told you the same so by system okay and station as stated okay, who needs okay to implement uh, such uh, kind of simple security solution it is the best solution for them because this is the easiest one easy to deploy easy to monitor easy to operate easy to configure all these things together so let's move to the next one okay snort architecture so snort installation okay consists of four logical component the packet Decoder, decoder which is compulsory so the packet decoder okay uh, processes each captured packet each uh, received package within the network okay? uh, it processes each and every network packet to identify and isolate protocol header so that uh, by okay doing so it can read the header, all the record of the net, uh, packets, which is useful in case of identification of the uh, intruders itself. So at the data link layer and also network layer, transport layer, and application layer. So these are different layers, okay? And every time uh, the packet decoder, okay, will decode, okay, or process uh, each packet. Uh, to identify and isolate protocols okay, header that what kind of protocol inside let's say data link network transport or application layer thereafter okay, uh, the second component is used for det uh, as it is called detection engine so the detection engine okay uh, the actual work of intrusion detection it it does the Okay, job of finding out the intrusion detection. So in this module, uh, analysis of each package, analysis of each packages, and also uh, is based on a set of rules which is defined by the, uh, let's say by the system itself or uh, and itself. Okay, the definition of the rules are put in place by the IT professionals or security professionals. So, uh, so set of rules, okay, we defined for this configuration of SNORT by security administration, administrators or I, 
security professionals. Okay, so these rules are defined by set of rules are defined by the administrators, and which are okay uh, basis for analyzing such kind of packages within the detection engine. The third component is logger. So, so for each package okay, which is transport, transmitted within the network, uh, this okay logger okay uh, that matches a rule okay the rule specified okay uh, what logging and alerting options are there. So logging putting in the record okay all the things that I got this package and this has this component and this feature and this one or that one okay all these things. And uh, in case of okay, some kind of malicious activities, uh, malicious uh, component was discovered in this uh, detection engine. So uh, the logger will uh, do the recording of those okay and uh, malicious component, and also it will alert the entire system. So uh, so uh, this is the third component. The f the fourth one is alerted. So this is actually the connected with the logger itself. So alerted for each detection, okay, for each detect detected com packages, okay, uh, uh, an alert can be sent, okay, in case of okay, uh, intrusion. So the alert option in the matching rule. So the alert option in the matching rule okay, determines what information is included in the event notification. So every events okay are recorded inside the system and then uh, also it, they are analyzed one by one and uh, using the each and every packages okay which is coming uh, inside the network and uh, whenever such kind of okay bad events happens let's say the bad events like uh, we identify some kind of security breach inside the system, then it will be alerted by alerter. Okay, that's all. So, so uh, this is the same thing. Okay, stored architecture. Uh, we have okay uh, the packages which are coming to the network. A decoder will first decode the packet that what is inside. If the packet is coded, it will be used to decode. Then detection engine will identify the exact uh, intruder. Okay, whether there's some kind of attack inside or, or not. I mean, such kind of malicious component is inside or not. Uh, if it is, then it will be recorded. Okay, and actually it is recording each and everything. So every time it is recording everything fine, everything fine. And if there's something wrong, no, this is not fine then it will record each and every time all these things. So the log file will keep all the records of the events. And uh, the connected one in this one is alert. So whenever uh, something bad happened, it will be recorded on the log file and also it will be alerted to using the alert system itself, the alert component actually.